I feel the need, the need to nitpick some movies just like this one. I am Berry Man, and this is 10 Things Wrong With. Top Gun is a 1986 American action drama film directed by Tony Scott. The film tells the story of Pete Maverick Mitchell and Nick Goose Bradshaw who are given the chance to train at the US Navy's fighter weapons school known as Top Gun and try and be the best of the best. When it got released, the film actually only got mixed reviews from the critics which is actually kind of surprising. However, even though it had mixed reviews, it became a huge commercial hit with fans loving this film. However, because of who I am, I can't believe in a perfect film and here are 10 things wrong with Top Gun. Number 10, 1%. So at the very beginning of this film, you get this title shot where it says that the top 1% of naval aviators get to join Top Gun. However, in a class, there's about 20 pilots. So 1%, 20 pilots, that means there's only 2,000 pilots in the US Navy, which currently, as of 2022, there's around about 7,000. So it should be about 70. Now, I've done some research. It hasn't increased that much. In the 80s, it was between five to 6,000. So that means there should have been 50 to 60 pilots in this class, not 20. So in essence, you're really downplaying how big the US Naval Air Fleet actually is. Or maybe that was the plan. Number nine, best of the best. So as I've said, it's the top 1% that gets to go to Top Gun. Now, Top Gun happens every eight weeks and there's 20 pilots every eight weeks. So does that mean it's the same 20 pilots each, each class? Because if they put the top 1% have been trained to be better, then no one else is gonna get a chance to go into the Top Gun. I didn't quite understand it because it should be for the second best to become the best. And then once you're the best, what these people who haven't been trained at Top Gun get better to go to Top Gun? <laughs> I'm going a bit mad just trying to think about it, but to me, there's something not quite right about the explanation of how you get to go to Top Gun. If you're the best, you get trained to be better, then how does anyone else go? See, it makes no sense. Number eight, I don't want to do it. So there's a couple of actors that are in this film who made their names in this film who didn't want to do this film. So first of all, Val Kilmer. He did not want to do this film. He was really unhappy about being sent the script for this film. He didn't want to do it until the studio's executives turned around and said, sorry, you're contracted to do it, off you go. So grudgingly, he didn't want to do it, which has probably played into his Iceman persona because some of his real life feelings are coming across in his performance, which is added to his performance. And what makes it more ironic is the fact that Val Kilmer is most famous for this film than most of his other ones. And let's face it, he's been in some cracking films. Take out Batman. Now, another big named actor that was in this film who didn't want to do it was Tom Cruise himself. Nope, he didn't want to do this film. So, Tony Scott brilliantly sent Tom Cruise up with a pilot, got the pilot to put Tom Cruise through his paces. He did barrel rolls, loop to loops, hit about four or five Gs while Tom Cruise is in this. Bear in mind, he hasn't signed up for this film yet. When Tom Cruise was actually in there, he threw up during this. That should have put any actor off. However, Tony Scott knew how to play Tom Cruise and Tom Cruise got out of it, just been sick and went, I'll do it. And if you think Tom Cruise being a bit of a nutcase is a recent thing, this was back in the 80s. He's an adrenaline junkie, full stop. But yeah, he didn't want to do this film. Number seven, conning the Navy. So yeah, Tony Scott, Cons the US Navy. Seriously. And it was by his own admission. So, beginning of this film, there's a beautiful shot of the aircraft carrier Enterprise with the sun in the background. Beautiful shot. However, the ship wasn't in the best position for it. So, Tony Scott asked the captain to turn the ship so he could get a better shot. The captain went, sorry, it costs 25 grand to turn this ship. So Tony Scott wrote out a check for 25 grand, gave it to the captain, 
to actually turn the ship. Now, this is where the con comes. The check bounced. Now, Tony Scott himself has said that, so it's not me trying to like poke, uh, poke the bear or anything like that. Tony Scott successfully, I might add, conned the US Navy out of 25 grand. What a legend. Number six, terminology. During this film, they use a lot of accurate terminology. However, some of the terminology is actually wrong. So, they keep saying that the unidentified things that are on their radars are bogeys. That is correct. A bogey is something that's unidentified. So once it's identified, it stops becoming a bogey. It becomes one of three things. It becomes either a friendly, which means someone who's on your side, a bandit, which is someone who's on the other side, who you're in active hostilities against, but you're not fighting with at that moment in time. And then lastly, you have a hostile. Basically, it's a bandit that's actually going to fire on you. But during this film, even when they know it's the Russians, they keep saying, I've got a bogey on my tail. No, you have a hostile on your tail. You got the terminology a little bit wrong there. I'm quite chuffed at myself on that one. Number five, inappropriate moves. Yeah, I've got to say this. Walking after a lady into the ladies room even after she says she's not interested is not a very good thing especially nowadays however it was still the same in the 80s if a woman says no she says no don't go and chase her into the ladies bathroom you might get yourself a very bad nickname if you do that number four sex scene so I've reviewed lots of films that have lots of sex scenes, and out of all of them, this is the first time I have ever brought it up on one of my lists, because this sex scene is laughable. Even when I watched it when it first came out, it was like, what the hell is this? Now, a few weeks ago, I did The Terminator. That had a sex scene in it, which actually enhanced the story, and it flowed, it worked, and it was nicely done. This is bit of a joke. I mean, the amount of tongue licking while doing it, that'd be a bit salty. And having the blue backlight doesn't really enhance the mood. Now there is a reason for the blue backlight is because this scene was actually filmed about six months after they finished filming. So Tom Cruise was actually preparing for another role and so was Kelly McGuinness. She had lost a little bit of weight and her hair was a different color. Tom Cruise had longer hair. Now, the reason why it came about is because test audience did, said there was no love scene in it. Well, sorry, it would have been better without that because that was a bit of a joke. Just having the insinuation that they were humping, great. Actually showing us in at that laughable scene, not so great. Number three, who killed Goose? I know the film actually said it was an unfortunate accident, but I don't buy that because now, I don't blame Maverick. In fact, Maverick is completely free of this. There's two people who's actually at fault here. One, Goose. Yes, Goose was his own demise because he was edging Maverick to get closer and closer. Get in there, get in there, get in there, get in there. So that's what Maverick was doing. And the other person who actually is involved in this uh, catastrophe was Iceman by doing that stupid thing because of his own pride. Those two people, in my opinion, killed Goose. Not an unfortunate accident, and it definitely, definitely wasn't Maverick's fault. But that's my theory on that one. It's an interesting thought to think about, actually. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number two, changing accents. Now, I'm actually quite glad that I'm getting Meg Ryan on my list because before I watched the film, I wanted to actually put Meg Ryan being in the supporting role when she was a big star. However, she didn't really come a big star until 1989 after this film. So I'm glad I managed to get her on this list because she plays as Goose's wife with that brilliant Southern accent, which was brilliant. It, she pulled it off fantastically, except after Goose passed away, where the accent sort of just disappeared. Seriously, if you go back and watch it, there's a, her accent's gone. And it was like, hmm, over two things have happened here. One, your acting wasn't as good in 1986, or two, 
You were conning Goose by pretending to be a southern girl when really you weren't. But yeah, your accent just went straight after he passed away. Shame on you. Number one. And the winner is... So in an 80s film, you would expect that the main hero of the story will win any competition. Well, that's not what happened in this film. Now, I know it's quite easy and obviously to point out that Iceman won Top Gun. However, the film was about the winner of Top Gun. It was about Top Gun. You would want the main character to win what the film's about, and it didn't, and it was wrong. Even though he got his redemption after in the fight afterwards. But no, it's still wrong. The main character did not win Top Gun. Final thoughts. Yeah, I've been ultra nitpicky this week, haven't I? And I have to be on this film because this film has stood the test of time. The special effects, what special effects? These weren't special effects. These were live action shots taken on real planes. That was awesome in the 80s and it stands up today. The acting was great. You actually got on and understood that the fact that Tom Cruise was Maverick was an outcast, and that was thanks to the fact he stayed away from the rest of the cast, where the rest of the cast gelled brilliantly. So Tom Cruise is, you can say what you want, but when he gets into a role, he really goes all out, and it shows in this performance, it shows with his relationship with the rest of the cast. It, that was brilliant, and you can't really say much wrong about it. It was beautifully directed, it looks brilliant, and oh, that soundtrack. What an amazing soundtrack. Awesome. There was nothing wrong with this film. Well, there was, but I'm being pedantic. It, this is as close to perfection as you can get, especially in the 80s. And they don't make films like this anymore. This is a good, enjoyable, brilliant 80s action film that has stand and will stand the test of time. I'm gonna have a theory that in 100 years time, no one is gonna talk about the sequel everyone is still going to be talking about the original film. We will see. So what am I going to rank it? I've got no choice, have I? Because I think people will hunt me down and lynch me for this. But yeah, this is a 10 out of 10 berries. Am I being ultra nice or am I being fanboy? Let me know in the comments below with your own comments as well. But other than that, come to next week. We're going to do a film that had a remake not so long ago, but the original film I have already covered. Want to know what I mean? We'll come back next Sunday. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.